Let's take a look at Desferain. Desferain is the newest vapor to come to market and today we're going to look at some of its characteristics and we're going to look at some practical tips for using it. So first of all when we're talking about the vapors we want to know about the MAC. Now the MAC to remind ourselves is the minimum alveolar concentration at which 50% of patients will have no motor response to surgical incision. Right? So the MAC for Desflurane is 6%. Compare that with um, the MAC for Isoflurane, which is 1.2%. So this is basically a measure of the potency of the agent. If we look at these two, for Desflurane you need 6% of desferrain in the alveolus to have the same effect as only 1.2% of isoflurane. So it's a measure of the potency of the agent. And desferrain therefore is relatively less potent than for example isoflurane. The other thing we need to know, know about though is the blood gas partition coefficient and this is where desferrain wins. So the blood gas partition coefficient is a measure of the solubility of the agent. It's a measure of the ratio of the dissolved agent versus the free agent in the blood. And desferrain is relatively insoluble with a blood gas partition coefficient of 0.42. Compare that to isoflurane with a blood gas partition coefficient is 1.4. So desferrain is less soluble, therefore there is more free drug available and that free drug can bind more easily to the brain which is our effect site. So that means we're going to have a very quick onset of action and importantly, in terms of the end of your procedure, you're going to have a fast offset of action as well. Something else we need to know about desferrain is the fact that it has a very low boiling point of 23 degrees Celsius at sea level. Now this is important because if you think about it, if you take um, a substance to boiling point, you are transitioning it from a liquid state where there are relatively few vapor molecules available to a vapor state or a gaseous state where there are more vapor particles available. And that obviously increases your saturated vapor pressure, which means there are more, more particles available that is exerting a pressure on your container. And with desflurane, very small changes in temperature lead to very large changes in vapor pressure. So it means we have, for a small change in temperature of a degree or two, we have a lot more particles available in the vaporizing chamber. And if we were going to use the same type of vaporizer as we use for seroflurane or isoflurane, you are going to set your dial to, for example, 6%. But you are going to get, for example, 7 or 8%, a lot more than what you expect because there are a lot more particles available to be added to your fresh gas flow. And that is, of course, because the way the old vaporizers work, the usual ones that we use, um, is they transmit the temperature from the environment, from the atmosphere. It's transmitted into the vaporizing chamber. Um, which is fine for isoflurane and sevoflurane. It actually helps to minimize the latent heat of vaporization. But for desflurane, it leads to problems. So we have a new kind of vaporizer that was developed for desflurane that has its own uh, power supply. And with that power supply, the vaporizing chamber is heated to 40 degrees Celsius. Um, so that... Any change in the room temperature, if the temperature control in theatre isn't very good or if you're doing, going from doing um, an adult to a pediatric patient and you want to increase the room temperature, that you are not going to affect the amount of desferrain vapor particles that are available. So we're heating it up to 40 degrees Celsius to eliminate that problem with unreliable amounts being, being um, given. Um, and when you plug it in, you'll see that there's a little light that comes on that says no output. And that means that the chamber is still being heated. And once it has reached the right temperature, the green operational light will come on and you know that you can now start with your anesthetic. The last concept I just want to touch on is that of MAC multiples and that of the X-MAC. Right. Now, first of all, in terms of MAC multiples, 
If we say that Desflurane has a MAC of 6 and Sevaflurane has a MAC of 2 and Isoflurane has a MAC of 1.2%, at this MAC, um, we're pretty much seeing the same effect, right? We, we're seeing, with, with this MAC, we're seeing that 50% of patients don't have a motor response. So we can say that this is equivalent to 1 MAC, right? Now, let's say, for example, that you want to know at what MAC is the patient going to become aware. We call this MAC aware, and that is actually 0 0.8 of the MAC. So you'll say 0 0.8 times 6, and then you'll know that at this um, MAC, the patient will start to be aware. Um, then you also get MAC awake, which is 0 0.4 MAC, so that is where... Um, where the patient should be able to, to be woken up. Um, and then, of course, you may need to make the patient slightly deeper. So you may need to go to 1.5 MAC in order to make sure that the patient doesn't have a sympathetic response to the surgical incision. Good. And then there's the concept of XMAC. Now, XMAC um, is recorded on some of our machines, and that's to do with the age of the patient. Remember that younger patients need a higher MAC to have the same effect. In fact, um, for, for six-month-old babies, they have the highest MAC, um, so you need relatively more vapor in the alveolus. And as we get older, you need a lower MAC. So some of the machines will actually show you that for a patient of 30 years, um, the um, desferin is set a is set at 6% um, and that will show you that that is uh, X Mac of 1 for that patient. Okay, right now, so these are just the basic characteristics of Desferane. So let's look at how we are going to use it. Important to bear in mind that you cannot do a gas induction with Desferane. It is very irritating to the airways. Okay, which is a pity. Um, so just be aware that you are not going to do a gas induction ever with Desflurane. And we also need to make sure because of this that the patient is deeply anesthetized before um, to, to place the tube um, before you start your Desflurane. Okay, so you need to induce the patient, make sure they're deep enough, intubate them and only then will you open your Desflurane vaporizer. Okay, so how do we make sure that we do this? And practically what um, I was taught is that we can give fentanyl or sufentanyl, but you're going to give slightly higher doses than you would normally do. And you can give 200 mics of fentanyl or 20 mics of sufentanyl um, as, your, as, your, um, as your induction dose together with propofol um, and you're going to give the full um, 2 to 2.5 milligram um, per kilogram dose so you, you'll probably end up giving a full 200 milligrams of propofol to your patient so make sure that they're deep enough then after you've given your induction agent plus or minus a muscle relaxant if you if you need to um, you are going to wait for the patient to be deep enough and then you are going if you're going to bag mask ventilate them you will do so with oxygen or an oxygen and air mix with no vapor right then you're going to intubate your patient and only then will you open your Desflurane vaporizer. Okay. Now note, you can use um, Desflurane with an LMA, provided that the patient is deep enough, and provided that you have a good enough seal, that you don't have a leak around, around the LMA. You can use it very, very effectively, um, but probably in the beginning, until you're used to how it works, it may be useful to use it with patients where you are going to intubate, paralyze and intubate, um, and then start your Desflurane. But you can absolutely use it with an LMA as well, provided that, that the patient is deep enough and that there is a good seal. Right. Now, 
you've now intubated your patient and you've opened your vaporizer. How are we going to get our desferane to an adequate MAC or XMAC? We're going to use something called the rule of 24. Now the thing with desferane is that if you open it too widely, if you um, push your push your concentration up too quickly, you can start to, to get hypertension and tachycardia is like a sympathetic um, response so we don't want that so there's a very set way in which we um, initiate our desferane and it's going to be that for three minutes you are going to have your fresh gas flow and you're going to have your vaporizer now your fresh gas flow you're going to set either to two liters and then your vaporizer is going to be at 12 percent or you're going to set your fresh gas flow to three liters and eight percent or you are going to set it to four liters and your vaporizer to six percent and you'll see that all of these make up 24 so 2 times 12 is 24 3 times 8 24 4 times 6 24 that's where the rule of 24 comes in and that's going to be for three minutes and after those three minutes you are going to reach an x mac of 0 0.9 okay so that's the mac x mac for for the age of the patient for a 30 year old patient that is um, an actual mac of about 5.9 percent we don't really want to go to an XMAC of 1 um, and definitely not above that because then you do start to see sympathetic um, activation and you obviously don't want to go lower than that in case the patient becomes aware. Hence why it's important to make sure if you do use desferane with an LMA, make sure that the seal is good that you don't lose a bit of desferane along the way. Um, so your XMAC is, is going to be at 0 0.9 after approximately 3 minutes. What do we do after that? Now here you need to think of the concept of a swimming pool. We have now filled our swimming pool and now we are going to splash a little bit in it. So the patient is going to use up a little bit of our, a, a little bit of our vapor and all that we are going to, to do is to replace the use or to replace the little splashes from swimming in the pool if you want to continue with that metaphor. So you're not going to keep um, your flows and your vaporizer settings that high. You are going to reduce your fresh gas flow and you can use minimum minimal flows or even basal flows, even better. So with minimal flows we're looking at about 0 0.5 liters but you can also if you have a good seal if the patient is intubated um, or you have, if you have a really good seal with your LMA you can go as low as 0 0.2 liters or 200 ml so basal flow bearing in mind that then you need to have 100 percent oxygen because that is the um, basal requirement that that the patient will will have reason for doing this is that even in a even a slight increase in your fresh gas flow is going to make you use a lot more of your vapor so you want to keep your fresh gas flows as low as possible that you use the minimum amount of desferane possible and typically your desferane um, vaporizer setting you're going to bring down from 12 to 10 to 8 and it usually stabilizes somewhere between 6 to 8 percent depending on the patient and depending on on the le on the amount of leak that you have um, so very low flows minimal or basal flows to minimize the amount of desferane that you're using um, and then your desferane vaporizer setting also reducing that down to between 6 to 8 percent um, and if you do this, then you can get away with using 10 ml of desferane per hour or even less. You definitely don't need to use more than that. So if you do this, it's also very cost efficient. And even though desferone is quite expensive, if you do this, you will use it in a very cost effective way. All right. Um, and that is it, folks. Um, if you can remember this, if you can remember the characteristics about desferane, Remember that you are never going to do a gas induction with desferane. You need to make sure your patient is deep enough. Um, you need to make sure that you, you place your airway before you open your vaporizer. 
and then um, set your desferane vaporizer and your fresh gas flow according to the rule of 24 aiming for an x max of 0 0.9 and then after that you reduce your fresh gas flows and you reduce your your vaporizer setting your, your concentration setting um, aiming for a use of a 10 ml of desferane per hour or less and that really is it i hope this was useful um yeah please let me know bye bye